Alright, welcome back everybody. This is the Premier League Season 3, Empire vs. Absolute Legends. My name is Triumph Man, and we are casting the third and final match in a best of three series between these two teams. Absolute Legends winning Game 1, then somehow Empire making a huge comeback in Game Number 2. Honestly, that looked like they were going to lose it right there and then. Somehow storming it back with a, a blow your brains, the Nebraska. Also known as Nebraska, I don't know what he's put that in his name for, but Blow Your Brains playing a very amazing Naga, completely tearing Absolute Don't Legends apart. Absolute Legends picking themselves a Phantom, 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 a Phantom Assassin who honestly got shut down a little bit too hard. She had a great farm, 7 minute minus, but just when it came to those team fights, she got locked down by nets, stuns, uh, even blind effects by, um, obviously, blind effects from Keeper of the Light, and then as well as just a flat-out mischance from Evasion on Naga Siren. She picked herself up a butterfly. It was just so frustrating for PA. Just could not get that damage down. But anyway, back to this match. Some quick bans here from AL that have gotten rid of the Tidehunter as well as the Chaos Knight. In response, Empire removed Batrider as well as the Darkseer. Batrider, of course, very, very painful so far with all these buffs. He has been laying down the law, causing all sorts of trouble for teams he plays against. Honestly, I thought he was good before his buffs. Now I think he's just flat-out insane because he was used very effectively every now and then in the Southeast Asian scene, so I don't think at any point was he ever a bad hero. He was definitely a decent pick, just uh, now he's a crazy good pick. Because he got a whole ton of buffs. First pick, though, for Absolute Legends. They will get to lead this off. Naga Siren still in the pool again. Will they decide they want to give it a shot this time around? Of course, Absolute Legends let it slip through last time. They said, you know what, Empire? You can get Naga Siren. We'll let you have it. And then we'll just counter pick the big AoEs, the Tide Hunter, the Enigma. In this case, Tide Hunter is banned. AL, though, taking their time here. Going 30 seconds into their overtime, and they open up with a Rubik. Which is fair enough. In fact, they could even go... In fact, if Naga Siren gets picked up now by Empire, they could even just go, you know what, Rubik, just hang back and then steal the spell. That's always a possibility. And then basically it just allows them to counter-initiate quite nicely, although they can counter that just by popping Song and then immediately popping Riptide just to uh, block that off. But absolutely, let's just say, you know what, let's get Enigma. Oh, man, that is a dangerous pair right there and there. Enigma and Naga Siren. That there causes... <laughs> If you get those two alts off correctly, that causes disasters. Obviously, if they could have a tide with it, they'd love it. But I honestly, though, I want to see a Jakiro. I would love to see a Jakiro with Naga Siren. I just want to see what kind of combos they can unleash. Last match, I don't really think Empire fully utilized the wombo combo potential that they had with their ultimate. Undying being picked up by Empire. What is this? Undying, of course, getting a few buffs here and there during the 6.75 patch, but Undying already was pretty decent. He's fairly annoying on the counter push as well. Just Tombstone being thrown down by behind, down behind a tower is very difficult to get at, and it also deals a fair amount of damage. And of course, Undying popping his ultimate causes all sorts of trouble during a fight. And plenty of burst damage, plenty of uh, burst damage heal as well. He's very, very painful. Lashrak, the first pick, a very good utility hero. The next series of bands, though, Chen is getting taken out there, and I think Chen definitely a good band on Absolute Legends' behalf. You do not want the Undying healing along with the Chen. Mass heals are always a big pain in the ass. We've even seen some Navi, of course, use so many heals that not even Ancient Apparition with Ice Blast could stop them. So many. I think they had four heal. It was a mass heal strat, and they had like four healers in the line, four AoE healers. It was utterly ridiculous. Keeper of the Light being banned by Empire, though. I think they're just trying to get rid of some of those counter pushes, of course. They saw how annoying... They, they used him quite effectively last match as well. They managed to stall a lot of early pushes. A lot of early pressure on towers just with Keeper of the Light just spamming the Illuminates left, right, and center. Fourth ban for AL. What will they snap or basically get rid of here? They're worried about the Chen. They could well get rid of the Enchantress. Or they might actually go for the Enchantress here. Of course, they do have the first pick. They got rid of the Chen. They could pick up the Enchantress and use her with Anaga Siren as well. As well, depends if Rubik's going to back him up. Not Rubik could be a solar mid in this case. But they ban out the Enchantress. They are worried about that then. Enigma so far looks like he's the most likely candidate for a suicide solo if it's going to happen. Brewmother being banned by Empire. She is a very strong suicide solo. Also, if they're going to be pushing, they don't want a Broodmother to be counter-pushing under the lane. She's always just flat-out annoying in this kind of situation. Uh. Final ban by AL. They just started to get rid of the Raster. Again, another strong really pusher that could quite that. easily fit into Empire's lineup. Also, the damage he can deal is quite disgusting. Also, the lockdown he's got. Raster is all around a really good... In fact, we used to see him back in the early days of Dota 2 as he was picked up quite frequently as a solo hero. As the pool has diversified, he's become much less favoured. He's become much more favoured 
as a support role. In fact, the Chinese really brought him back as a support hero. They brought him back in favor as a strong support hero. And they actually tend to just rush a blink dagger. And they say, you know, arcane boots and then a blink dagger. Screw everything else. We'll just grab that. Windrunner, the final band, though. They decide to pick that off now. So the, this, both teams actually are actually rather empire deciding, you know what, let's get rid of those suicide solos that we don't want to see. Enigma as well, in that case, if, they, if AL were going to pick up a suicide solo, we probably would have seen Enigma jungle then and then jump out of the jungle, cause some trouble. Dazzle! Oh wow, Absolute Legends pick up their own healing potential. This is going to make Nagasan ridiculously hard to kill. Dazzle, of course, plenty of armor, plenty of heals. And obviously, two sources of negative Jakiro. physical armor now, and Jikiro gets picked up, finally! I've been wanting this to happen ever since his damn patch came through. I've been looking forward to a Jikiro game, and this is the first one I get to see. So let's see how this goes down. I was kind of hoping mostly to see it with an Argus but at the same time, you know what? What the hell? We'll go with it. We'll roll with it. The slows from Templar Assassin can quite easily set up Jikiro with his Ice Path and Macro Pyre. Now the final pick for Absolute Legends, I think they could be looking here for a solo mid, or a, they're looking for some kind of solo hero with uh, with farming potential. Could go with a quite a few things, quite a few things here. They could even go with some burst nuke, or even some burst disable. We'll see. And they go with Puck. That definitely fits the bill. Nagasaren, of course, can set up those really. Doesn't even need to set things up though. She doesn't even really need to set Puck up. Of course, Puck sets himself up. He gets that early Blink Dagger, but we'll see what they decide to go with. In fact, Puck may even go, you know what, screw the Blink Dagger. I'll just let Nagasaran set things up. That said, though, Blink Dagger is what makes Puck ridiculously hard to kill. Once you get a Blink Dagger on Puck, you are harder to kill the Morphling. It's so nuts how hard it is to lock him down. And Klinks is the final pick from Empire. An interesting decision. Klinks, of course, we've seen him actually take the soul in mid before. It has been quite powerful, but the same thing is... If he can get the early Orchid, and then if he can get the Orchid off on, say, a Dazzle or the Puck, or even the Nagasar, and just prevent them from using some of their spells, he will really help lock down that fight. Now, let's well, let's call out the team of the players and the heroes. Okay, so for Empire on the Radiant Cell, we have Govac playing Shakira, SS playing Lashrak, Scandal on Templar Assassin, Blow Your Brains on Undying, and Fennec on the Clinks playing for Absolute Legends on the Dire side we have Mania playing Enigma Come With Me playing Rubik also known as Throw With Me I know the chat was giving him much grief last game honestly it's a bit harsh but anyway Vigos playing the Dazzle Frieza on Puck and Sony on the Nagasaran a five man sweep from Absolute Legends they will be heading into the jungle just to get their ward set up they walk in a Clinks they could quite easily pick him off Clinks has started off with a Wraith Band looks like he's been pulled a little bit of regeneration, possibly, and he may be going for a quick Ring of Aquila. Meanwhile, looks like we have Jakiro, Undying, and wow, this is a pretty aggressive... If these guys are going for a, a Trilon up top, this could get pretty damn aggressive. And Klinks, honestly, if he's left 1v1, can go 1v1 quite easily. Who will he be up against? It's likely to be the Puck. Honestly, we've seen, I used to see Puck as his Suicide Solo quite frequently, and then Anti-Mage really became, like, this staple... The staple of half trilane or just like hard carries that would be in that safe lane, and Puck just cannot handle facing off against Anti Mage. Anti Mage just wrecks his shit, without a doubt. Every single time I was the Anti Mage on some, nearly a godlike stretch, just because he was feeding on Puck so easily. We see a blocking ward has been thrown down by the Dire once again. We'll show their vision with that ward. Illusion rune or invisibility rune gets killed there. I think I've got the Dyer's Vision. Oh, wrong, wrong Vision. I had the Radiance Vision. Dyer Vision is up now. If you actually put it further that side, if you actually put it further to this side here, it can see up that way a bit better. But anyway, back Vision. Freezer is actually teleporting out. They're rotating lanes. It's an interesting decision. They're actually rotating their dual lane to bottom. Enigma will be in the jungle. This... It's an interesting decision. Puck is going to struggle against this without a doubt. This is going to be annoying just the amount of disable that they have. They could quite easily lock him down. He's going to have to be very careful with how he plays, but at the same time, this is going to help shut down Clinks. A 2v1 situation is never fun. That said, he does have the safe lane. They've got counter wards, though, to spot out the Clinks. And with a net and counter wards, they could quite easily give them the space that they need to burst down Clinks. They do need to be careful, though. The harass coming up Nagasaran can be quite painful. So Come With Me needs to get on top of this. But again, Clinks can trade hits with Come With Me quite easily. So they're just harassing him with the Searing Arrows, and as he gets levels, that's just going to hurt more and more and more. Now we go back to mid, though. It is a 2v1 in mid. Jakira will be helping, and what is... I've just noticed the fact that Dazzle is soloing mid. 
Alright, somewhat different. I guess he's... Uh, then again, I guess... Okay. This is not as freaky as I first free as, as I first make it seem. Dazzle is a very, le very leveled defender here. It's like he wants all of his skills maxed out. He wants his ultimate. He wants absolutely everything. Now, this means the solo position for him is a strong position. Secondly... He wants items too. You get Dazzle and Early Mech, Arcane Boots, Urn, all these nice items. He actually, he becomes very difficult, difficult to kill. And on top of that, he makes his team ridiculously hard to kill, rather than being the War Bitch. So if you can give the War Bitch duties to somebody else, this is definitely, this does have potential payoff to it. And on top of that, Dazzle actually hits pretty damn hard. He has a pretty damn good uh, intelligence gain. He gets a few early items. He can actually start tearing people apart. It is sort of a pub thing to do. But it is there. He can actually hit pretty damn hard, especially since the amount of negative armor he brings to the table. You stack that with something like Riptide, he can tear people a new one very, very easily. The amount of damage he'll be tossing out is quite scary, especially if he can get that burst down, the healing wave burst down, and I'm pretty sure he can bounce that off the illusions too. If he get the surround with the illusions and then throw down a max healing wave, especially after the buff, that will shred somebody. Negative armor plus healing wave and illusions is not a nasty, it's not a pleasant thing to have happen. Of course, the downside is he has to be careful the number of heroes around because it does prioritize heroes. And this is going to be annoying for Lanai just because the poison touch, as you see there, knocks off her refractions quite quickly. So go black, though. He's trying to jack some creep, and they have actually rotated him away from mid lane and said, Alright, you're going to have to, said to Lanai, you're going to have to handle this solo. Klinks needs support, and this will definitely help Klinks stand lane. In fact, I feel like Klinks has a stronger lane at the moment, just because they have a lot more damage there, I feel, from Jakiro at the moment. Just more damage and harass. Just the dual lane, the dual range is really going to make things tell here. Dyer's top tower is under attack. And the fact that they have the safer positioning, but Pete, speaking of positioning, Park now diving behind the, or just hiding behind the tower, as Empire dive, looking for trouble. They try to find a fight. Harass the tower a little bit. Puck has to back out, but doesn't, nothing serious comes out of that. We've got an item coming to Rubik. It will be a set of wards as well as some extra regen, so you can just trade. Hits Riptide again. Just going to hit Jakiro there. Nagasaren doing decent. They're getting some last They're only 9 and 0, but at the same time, Klinks 14 and 4. He's not that far ahead. Meanwhile, up in the top line, Puck going 8 for 1. Could be a lot worse, to be honest. Now Vigos there going to be taking on mid. I'm just looking at the mid at the moment. 10 and 4 there for Dazzle. Dazzle though has been moving around going for runes and stuff. Templar Assassin on the other hand has been sitting in the lane so she's had a little bit more opportunity to see us. And of course with ref with the damage charge from Refraction it's very easy for her to last hit. And Dazzle doesn't have any huge burst potential. He can throw it out. She will beat him to the rune finding that in this rune there. They're going to try and cause a kill here. Can they get it? Doesn't look like it. Just pops the invisibility rune and backs off. Jakira, there we go, one level of ice pass, two levels, and uh, his twin flame there, twin flaming breath there. Frieza now has also gone for an early bottle, this is going to help him spam a little bit more, he's going to need to spam the shuttle, no, he's going to have to shuttle it back and forth quite frequently though, he's going to be, it's going to cost him a lot of mana, they're going to come in and go, going to try and get a kill here, not going to happen I think, Enigma has been spotted up, they might even try and turn this around on Enigma. Lashrak does back up in time as the first blood comes from Klinks, gets a kill on the bottom line, they're going to go for two though, and can they find the ice path lands, this is what I mean, this is so much better than it was before, one last hit there, and they find the kill, and Dyer's Courier gets picked off as well, oh man, that could not have gone any worse, for, <laughs> that could not have gone any worse for Empire, they lose their Courier, they lose two heroes, they lose their carry, man, that kind of stings, I'm not even sure who managed to pick off the Courier there. Another trap being thrown down there in front of Vigos. Vigos not really caring though. Going to an auto attack. Scandal in the face. Scandal with going a very stock standard build there. Which we should check Dazzle's build. He's going for two and poison touch. Three and healing wave. Not too worried about last word at the moment. Uh, Shallow grave at the moment. Last word. Wrong bloody hero there. The net goes down. Oh, and the totem of this tombstone gets chucked down as well. Looks like they're going to counter attack. Blow your brains. Not even scared. Going to go out to come with me. Turns his around. Turns around now. Runs away. Taking a fair amount of damage there. Shrek may have overstepped his welcome as he throws down a splitter. Misses once again. Blow your brains has to back up. The damage was not sufficient. And he will have to back up there. No die here is going down. Actually, a lie. Puck did get picked off. So apparently, he actually rotated at the bottom lane and died there. Thought he was up top. Never mind then. Undyne though has picked up an early Basilius ring. Templar Assassin 
Bottle, I think, is being shuttled back and forth right now by the Courier. Has picked up her Phase Boots. She's just going to... This is where she starts to hit really, really hard. Once Phase Boots are done, Refraction is maxed out, and she starts getting a couple of levels in Meld. She basically starts melting heroes, especially those who don't have armor like Rubik to begin with. One starting armor. Not a pleasant place to be. They're looking for a bit of a fight here. Unfortunately, Naga Siren doesn't have the mana for it, though. They can't really make anything happen just yet in that top lane. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane... It looks like I'm just going to harass back and forth. Just looking at the CS. Clink's doing extremely well. 33 and 6. At the same time, I'm dying. Also firing well. 35 and 14. Linnea, 32 and 15. This could come down to a bit of a far more here. As Dazzle, only 21 and 5. Not doing as well as you'd like. He has gone for an early medallion. No, wait a minute. Who's got the medallion then? Somebody. Unless that was his ultimate there. Actually, that was his ultimate. I was about to say, it looked like a medallion of courage effect. Tombstone thrown out once again. Rubik just trying to auto attack down. It is worth the fair amount of gold. Actually getting healed up there by Blow Your Brains. They are going to go for the kill on it. Rubik finds it. Good 90 gold bounty there. They get the kill there as well on Enigma who oversteps his welcome. However, Enigma may get his revenge here as it looks like they will get the kill. The creep helping out a lot. Lashrak actually getting gangbanged there by the neutral stack. And they get a bit of a response there in the end. Two going down though for the Radiance, uh, for the die side as Dazzle gets picked off during that fight as well. Puck now just phase shifting to avoid, but look at the damage being dished out there by Blink's Puck. Has no escape. One more auto attack. It will finish him off. Unfortunately, Puck firing off his illusory orb way too early. I probably should have just shifted further down the lane to maybe escape. And now Clinks may have found himself overextending. They can see him. He does have Wind Walk up in five seconds. So the quest is, can Mania actually kill him? Mania may actually regret doing this. Black holes him, though. This will save his life. Dazzle is here. Doesn't have Shallow Grave, though. The DOT will finish off Clinks, I think. It does indeed. We see a bit of a clash up here as well. Templar Assassin tries to dump him on the high ground. Not happening. Come with me. Gonna try and teleport out. Not gonna happen though. Scandal gets another kill. 7 to 3 currently. Empire leading the way. We'll have a look at the gold advantage. A 3k advantage currently for the Radiant side. An experience as well. A 3k advantage for the Radiant as well. Mania now. He's got his. Well, he's got his uh, soul ring done and dusted, but the issue is he's been forced out of the jungle at the moment. He's just gone, you know, okay, I've got to put pressure on the lanes here because Absolute Legends and lanes are not doing too well. This is one of the things that happens when you have a dedicated jungler, is it does, while it does increase your GPM, overall things go well. It does, the sacrifice is you weaken your lanes, and now Enigma's being pulled out of his jungle to help fight elsewhere. He's probably not feeling too happy about that. As we see the harassment there on Sony. Sony not getting in as much farm as he'd like. Only 25 and 1 at nearly 25 minutes in. That's not a good position to be in. Funnick is slightly behind. Not quite on target. But at the same time, he's doing a lot better than everybody else except Enigma. And you see there the farm. This is the telling thing here. The last hits. 45, 44, and 43. The top three heroes of Radiant. Only one die hero is even close. And he was a jungler who has not been bothered in his jungle. He's had complete free farm. This is definitely looking problematic. Dazzle finally picking up a level in Shallow Grave there. Has not been as active as I'd thought. I, really, I think it just comes to the fact he's not getting as much farm as he wanted. He is at the very least getting levels. That is one thing at the very least, but at the same time wants some farm as well. So it looks like Ru Rubik unable to help Sony here. Sony actually just being chased back. Tombstone being thrown in as well. They just chase him off with the zombies. Double damage top. Dyer's Templar Assassin tower. finds it. Will she go top? No, decides not to. Goes back to a mid lane. Going to continue farming. Enigma now backing off as well. Has got a smoke ready to gank. Puck really hasn't had a huge impact so Dyer's far. Lucial just going to try and jack a few creep. Succeeds. But in the end, Clinks is not really being shut down. And that's what they need. And at the moment, I think Empire are happy to let things roll on at this pace. They're just going to say, you know what, Absolute Legends. Ball is in your court. It's up to you to make something happen. If this keeps going, we're going to win this quite easily. We've got three heroes who do well with farm, farming extremely fast. 51, they've all got 50 plus CS at the 10 minute mark. Definitely looking quite strong at the moment. It's not out of control, just the fact that they're really far ahead is the main issue. Sony now taking a bit more damage here. That Rip is doing a lot of damage to him. Split Earth doesn't connect. If they got the Split Earth down, that possibly would have been a kill. The Tombstone goes down. The ult comes in as well. Naga Siren has got her ult up. No, she uses up all her mana on the net. Telekinesis drags him back under the tower. I don't think he cares that much, though. He's just tanking that damage. You see him being healed up by his ultimate. Does not care that much in the slightest. Also has got his spells available. Come with me, though. Actually steals the ult and turns into a mini undying. See Rubik there. 
Mini Undying can, of course, steal that ultimate. And, of course, actually keeps his ranged attack. We see the Shrek down. Uh, we see. Not the Shrek. Jakiro chasing off Radiant Puck. Puck, unfortunately, not farming that well. He's sitting on 27 and 2. See another spell stolen. There's the Song of the Siren. Mania's coming. He's looking for the double black hole. He finds it there. Split Earth also landing on SS. He, that's what he stole there. Come with me, stealing that Split Earth. They're going to try and pick up Undying. They're Undying. Extremely tough to kill. Can they get it? He's got a Tombstone coming if he wants it. He is going to throw down the heal. Finds it as well. Dazzle is here as well. They heal again from Blow Your Brain. Still running. Going to try and suicide at the tower, I think. No, he's just going to keep running. Going to try and teleport out. Is it going to happen? He will, no! Malefus will stop him dead in his tracks. And two nice kills there for Absolute Edges. That is what they need to turn this around. They need to keep picking off those heroes. Meanwhile, Linnea has been fairly inactive. We'll see what she decides to go for first. Looking for an easy tower, though. And they glyph up, and Linnea taking a lot of unnecessary damage at the moment. Passes off the aggro to creep. Latrak going to take the last hit on the tower. Meanwhile, we're going to have Klinks busy. Chewing away at this tower down here. Puck going to try and hold it off with some spam. Not really achieving a whole lot. Nice path goes down on Puck. Lashrak is coming in as well. Puck does have phase shift. Three seconds of illusory orb on top of that. He should be okay. Throws down the dream call. The ports come in. SS may have overstayed his welcome. Throws down the splitter. That was from Come With Me. Come With Me now. Diving back in. Gets hit. Healed up though. Ice Puck not doing enough damage. Flame Breath will take him out. The Twin Flame will take him out. The Dual Fire there. And also Jakiro going down to boot as well. Will they take out Dazzle? Yes, they do. Templar Assassin wades in and makes herself heard. And now Freezer into trouble. There's the Orchid on Freezer. Freezer is likely to die here. Pops the Magic Wand. Will it be enough? The Damage Amp cleans him up. Refraction preventing the damage coming through. And it looks like Refraction was stolen there. Yes, Rubik gets his hands on it. And for what gains that AL made, they then immediately... Well, then again, I think that was relatively even, except for the fact that Templar Assassin picked up a few kills. 5k advantage there to, to uh, Absolute... No, to Empire at the moment. Absolute Legend's falling behind a little bit further. Experience-wise, 3k advantage to the Radiant side as well. As we see, SS actually taking a lot of damage from those little Eidolons there. And it looks like Rubik's looking for a kill, though. He is going to back off in time. Rubik too slow to run him down. Dust gets popped. Clinks has been spotted. The negative armor on top of Clinks. The Eidolon's going to cause critical damage on the slow from Templar Assassin. Going to try and help Clinks get away. Clinks will manage to escape here just barely. By the skin of his teeth. Rubik moving. I think he's hoping to get a fade. Bounce a fade bomb off. Doesn't find the damage, though. Doesn't find the distance on it, though. Meanwhile, though, we've got to remember Undying is farming solidly here. That said, Naga Siren has managed to catch up just a little bit, of course. She, this is where she starts to farm extremely well. That those Arcane Boots allows her to spam her Mirror Images as well as Riptide a lot more, which allows her to just get mobile, get around the map, and to tap more sources of gold. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Bit of a push there on the creep. Looks like the counter push there from the Radiant. Auto fire has been picked up by Shakira now. Just wants one level to help and push towers. And now the port comes up. Come with me though, making a terrible decision. I don't know why he thought that was a good idea. I didn't realize he was He ported him basically on about 300 health against someone with a pretty much who has an instantaneous stun now. That was not a good decision at all. We also lose Enigma on top of that. Looks at like Dazzle though, pops his Shallow Grave. Gonna try and get away. Unlikely to escape here. He's just going to try and hope he dies to the neutrals. He does get killed by a satyr who snakes that one out from underneath Templar Assassin. Klinkso causing carnage with that. Oh no, Naga Siren. They're going to teleport out with a Song of the Siren. That's a buzz kill right there. Jakiro, though, is definitely looking really good this match. I've got to say, I like the new Jakiro. I really do. We haven't really seen Macrofire hit them that hard. It's just the fact that Ice Path is so much better now. It is just night and day between the new Ice Path and the old. I think that's the biggest difference, to be dead honest. Just the fact that he can pretty much instantaneously stun someone. It's just so much more useful in this situation. It looks like Undying going to take the forefront here. Still hasn't managed to max out Tombstone yet. He's sort of maxing out a lot of different spells. But again, Undying is one of those heroes who is kind of level hungry. Lots of good spells. The Ice Path goes down again. Doesn't hit though. Misses that time round. Doesn't even have a really good aim there. There's a black hole though. Enigma dragged them in. It looks like they're inside. The Molten Fire there. The Liquid Fire doing critical damage there. Mania though trying to get the hell out. Looks like Shallow Grave may keep him alive here but not for long. Ice Path goes down again. Finishes off Dazzle. Go Black gets a double kill. 
Jakiro causing massive amount of carnage, does heal himself up there with the mech on top of that, and they should be able to take out, or at least massively damage this tower. Looks like, blow your brains, is going to stand up and tank this, because you know what, he doesn't care. He's a honey badger, doesn't give it. Easy tower down for the Radiant side, they're going to bring that one down. Meanwhile, Naga Siren up at the top lane has actually gone for a Vanguard. Interesting decision there. I see that every now and then. Not a, I'm honestly not a huge fan of it. Especially after the nerfs. Is he a steal there? What did he get? He got Edict. And now it looks like Come With Me in some trouble to blink in there. Scandal dives in. Ice Bath misses. Went between two heroes. Dual Breath though. Going to clean things up as well as Tempo Assassin. Wailing one. A slow there on Dazzle. Dazzle goes down the sides from the Orchid as well. Puck trying to retreat. Will get away. No! There's the Ice Path. Picking him off. I think the problem is currently Jakiro. Like you see a few misses there. It's mostly Jakiro is aiming them in between heroes. Like trying to sort of work off the old Ice Path where you'd have to time it more than anything else. This situation though, another tower is taken out. And a maxed out ice path, it is very, very painful. GG is called Absolute Legends throwing in the towel. Holy crap, okay. I guess, you know, fair enough, at 17 minutes in, you're already 14,000 gold behind. 12,000 plus experience, that is a tough roll, that is a tough one to beat. But guys, this has been Empire managing to secure their streak. Empire are now on a 23, 23! Yes, 23 win streak. I really feel like AL should have won the last match before this one. Game number two, I really feel they should have been the ones to break it. But as it is, Empire, they made a comeback, capitalized on some mistakes. And remember, that's how the game Dota is. Sometimes you make a mistake, and it comes down to as much as not not so much, you know, playing to win, but playing not to lose. You see an enemy make a mistake, you capitalize on it. And it's just that's just the nature of the game. So, you know, don't, don't go and scream at Absolute Legends for that. Sometimes it happens. That said, you know, congratulations to Empire, and remember guys, we'll be doing, uh, we will be doing an interview shortly after. We will be going to a short ad break while I call up, figure out who I'm going to be interviewing and then calling them up. So get your questions ready. If you want to talk to a pro player, ask them some particular questions about this match or anything in general, you know, that's obviously not too uncomfortable for them. Feel free to ask them and we'll pass them along. But as it is, congratulations to Absolute Legends, you know, or rather Empire, they did take this one out 2-1, and again another 2-1 series. Holy crap. Absolute Legends, though, they lose their second match in this league. But they did put out a pretty strong showing in game number one. So, you know, there is that. They definitely have potential. But guys, this has been Try for Man Casting for the Premier League. Stay tuned. We've got an interview coming up. Also, you can follow me on Twitter. I am Try for Man on Twitter. And also, for any news on the Premier League, make sure you check out our webpage. It is thepremierleague.eu. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, etc. You can see all of our social media, YouTube as well. We do have a YouTube channel. Any kind of support on these things, follow us on YouTube as well. Subscribers, numbers that we can throw out sponsors such as Twitch TV and Steel Series, our sponsors for season three. It helps us make ourselves, basically make ourselves and you guys heard as well, and lets everybody in the esports scene know that this kind of work that the sponsors are putting in is appreciated. Anyway, guys, we'll be back shortly with an interview with somebody from Empire. So